Recently, the handheld PC gaming market has become pretty saturated. But despite there being so many choices, each device has some pretty sizable compromises to make. The Ioneo 2 just came out, and less than a month later, there's already a 2S coming out soon. The Ioneo Air Plus is too expensive, coming in at nearly $1,000. The original Ioneo Air had some hardware issues for me, and was fairly underpowered. The One X Player 2 is a monster-sized device. The AOK Zoe has the absolute worst D-pad I've ever used. The Steam Deck, while a great value, is lower spec, and the screen is definitely a bummer, coming in at only 800p. The One X Player Mini has a terrible performance to value ratio, coming in at nearly $1,000. The Envernic Win 600, well, I can't even quite rationalize its existence. But now there's a new system, the ASUS ROG Ally. Outdoing Steam Deck in nearly every way and at an impressively competitive price, is the ROG Ally going to kill the Steam Deck and the Switch in one fell swoop? Or is this just another handheld gaming PC that's going to be overweighted by its downsides and compromises? I've had the Ally for a few days now, so we're going to do a quick first impressions. We'll talk about the unboxing experience, first time setup, test out some gameplay, and wrap it up with some quick thoughts. So get subscribed and let's get started. Unboxings are always a highlight for me. This is usually the company's first impression, and it sets the stage for how the actual device will turn out to be. The ASUS box is pretty simple, it's just about the size of the actual device. On the back of the box, it has the specs. So we can see the Z1 Extreme processor listed here, alongside 512GB of internal storage, 16GB of RAM, and a 40 watt hour battery. This specific model comes in at $699. ASUS is also going to release another model that's $599, and it will have the Z1 processor instead of the Z1 Extreme. So taking the plastic off and opening the box up, we've got the device front and center. It's wrapped in some plastic with some first time start instructions. Underneath the top of the box though, is actually a little cardboard ROG stand. All right, now we can go back to the device itself. Taking it out of the box, I was really immediately astounded at how light it feels. Similar devices like the One X Player 2 and the Ioneo are really dense feeling, but the Ally feels light in the hands. Seeing what else is in the box, we've got our 65 watt charging brick. The rest of the box is just some cardboard, the standard instruction booklet, and also a warranty information and some ASUS pamphlets. It's interesting that the instruction booklet is actually labeled as February 2023. I wonder if that's when the documentation was created, or maybe this device was actually supposed to release sooner. Taking a closer look at the charger, I was a little disappointed that the plug doesn't collapse, so you've always got the prongs sticking out. but the wire connected to the brick is actually insanely long. It's going to make gaming on the couch a breeze, even if you're not right next to an outlet. Taking the plastic cover off the Ally, we can get a good feel for the ergonomics of the device. It's impressively light, relatively thin, and feels comfortable to hold. The analog sticks on this device feel absolutely amazing. It feels like their range of motion is nearly the same as an Xbox or PlayStation controller. The analog triggers also feel really great. They've got a good grip to them and feel good to press anywhere on the buttons themselves. The ABXY are perfectly sized, although they're a little bit more flat than I was expecting. The back of the device has these huge macro buttons that protrude out. And so far, it's the only thing I'm not sure if I'm going to like about this device. I don't think I'll accidentally press them, but they just stick out a lot. I was really afraid of the D-pad because of how similar it looks to the AOK Zoe D-pad, which is just absolutely awful. Luckily, the ROG Ally D-pad feels pretty good. It's definitely not the best D-pad I've ever felt, 
but it does feel serviceable. Moving to the top of the device, we've got a headphone port, microSD card slot, ASUS's proprietary XG mobile port, which also has the USB-C port, the volume rocker, and a power button, which also doubles as a fingerprint sensor for quick login. I do wish the device had more than one USB-C port, and specifically one at the bottom to make it more easily dockable. It's a little bit awkward that the USB-C port is part of the proprietary connector. It means that I always have to look at the top of the device to see where the USB-C port actually is. Alright, let's get this thing powered on. Like the rebel that I am, I didn't read the instructions and I tried to boot up the Ally, but found no success. Then I thought back to the plastic I haphazardly ripped off which said that I should plug it in first. So take two turning on the Ally, plugged in this time. And it worked fine. I was curious if ASUS was going to have some sort of customized Windows setup and activation method, but it is just the standard setup. Once we're booted up though, we're taken right into Armory Crate. This is the piece of software that has the opportunity to really sell me on a perfect Windows gaming handheld. On first boot, we can see that it's got Steam preloaded, Xbox Game Pass, and actually an entirely free game. When you launch Steam from Armory Crate, it automatically boots up in big picture mode, which is pretty cool. I booted up the free game to give it a quick try, and I was really impressed that it really was a full game. They could have easily packaged in a demo, but they really did include a full game. Nearly all of the settings that you would want access to are part of Armory Crate, and navigating around the experience is pretty straightforward. Other options within Armory Crate are to adjust button mapping, handle game profiles, which seems like a great feature so you don't have to keep playing with TDP every time you open up a game, and options to adjust the RGB around the analog sticks. One thing about Armory Crate that I don't like though, is that the applications you can add to it are limited. So for example, I've installed Retrobat, but for some reason it isn't detected, so I can't add it to the launch options. One part of Armory Crate is the Command Center. The command center is a quick access tool to adjust volume and brightness on the fly, change the TDP of the device, and even toggle a stat monitor to show FPS, watts, and remaining battery percentage. The command center is actually really seamless, and switching between TDPs is super quick. I'm really enjoying the stat monitor overlay. You can easily just drag it around using the touchscreen so it isn't in the way of any game. Alright, so that's a quick overview of what I've messed around with so far. Let's get into some gaming. So far, my first impressions of this device are great. Windows setup jankiness aside, this was a pretty seamless experience to get everything up and running. Now that we've got a bunch of games installed, let's see how they feel to play and how well they perform. So the plan here is that we're going to do some light testing for my first impressions, and then I'll come back later with a full in-depth review and some in-depth gameplay to show as well. Starting with PC gaming, I did find things to run pretty well. Fall Guys played great once I turned the TDP to 15 watts. You can tell because I suck at this game and I did super well on this round. Cyberpunk played pretty well at 15 watts, but I did have to play with some of the settings. At first I reduced the resolution to 720p, but the text was just too small and blurry, so I stuck with 1080p, but I turned the graphics setting down to low. Atomic Heart was another game that I tried since it's on Game Pass and I wanted to make sure that I could take full advantage of my Game Pass Ultimate subscription with the Ally. The game performed pretty well at 15 watts. There were some frame dips, but if I wasn't constantly looking at the FPS counter, I wouldn't have been able to tell. Diablo 4 was an interesting one. It defaulted to medium graphics, but I had a really tough time figuring out if the lag that I was experiencing was laggy gameplay or a server issue. Turns out it was a device issue. Once I reduced the graphics quality to low, performance was much better. For emulation, I wanted to jump right into the high-end stuff. First I tried Red Dead Redemption for Xbox 360. I was really surprised to find that I couldn't get this game to boot at all. 
I've had hit or miss performance with this game depending on the device, but it always boots no problem. I also tried booting the Simpsons game on Xbox with no luck either. I will have to do some troubleshooting and come back to this later though. The next obvious choice to test was Breath of the Wild with some Wii U emulation. I tried a bunch of variations running this game. OpenGL, Vulkan, 15 watts, 25 watts, none of it produced a smooth gameplay experience. I'm sure with some tweaks this game could run just fine, but out of the box I wouldn't consider it playable. As a quick comparison, the iMeo 2, which is what I was testing right before the Ally, it boots into Red Dead easily, and getting into gameplay is perfectly fine. Wii U boots up Breath of the Wild with absolutely no problems. Gameplay is even surprisingly pretty solid. And this is also all at 15 watts. My interpretation of this though is that this isn't a bad sign. I think it's just part of being an early adopter. This is a different chipset, so it's possible that these emulators just aren't optimized yet. Next, we'll test out some GameCube. I wanted to jump into probably my favorite GameCube game, and it also happens to be one of the most difficult to run at full speed, F-Zero. At 15 watts, it just didn't quite run at full speed. Bumping it up to 25 watts though, it immediately went to full speed, steady 60 frames per second, no dips. Lastly, I wanted to try out some games that are D-pad centric. I checked out Celeste, which despite me not being very good at it, the D-pad did feel just fine. It's definitely not the best, but it doesn't feel like I had any accidental presses. The same applies to Super Mario World on Super Nintendo. It's definitely not a bad D-pad, but it's just not quite the traditional D-pad I wish we had instead. One interesting thing that pretty much just surfaced as I'm going through first impressions is that reviewers who had the ally early have noticed that the latest BIOS update from ASUS has dramatically nerfed performance. Unfortunately, I was a bit unlucky and I didn't discover this until just now. While I was doing the initial setup, I just let it do all of the updates, including a BIOS update. But the bright side of that is that the performance here isn't terrible. It's great to know that it should be better, and we will hopefully see an update from ASUS pretty quickly. Since the ROG Ally is pretty new, besides the ROG branded case, which I find pretty ugly, there really aren't any carrying cases out there yet. I recently got this TomTalk bag, which was made with Steam Deck in mind, but it's a great way to carry around a device and not worry about another layer for a carrying case. It's what I'm going to use to carry the Ally around. I also pack it with a charger and an external battery so I can be sure I've got enough battery life while on the go. The ASUS ROG Ally, if nothing else, is going to introduce people to a new way to game. Even if it's just by having it on display at your local Best Buy, the Ally is going to make gamers reconsider how they want to experience their games. They can choose hooked up to a TV with a massive console or on the go with the option to dock your gaming device to a TV, more similar to the Switch with massive AAA titles like Cyberpunk or Elden Ring. There's going to be a ton more to say, but I wanted to make a quick one showing off my experience with the device so far. In general, performance is pretty good, but I do hope that the BIOS update will revert back to the original, even better performance. I really like the Armory Crate game launcher so far. I'm impressed that it quickly detects newly installed games and automatically adds it to the launcher. The command center makes the gaming experience a lot more enjoyable knowing I can quickly change settings on the fly. At a slightly higher price than the Steam Deck, I don't know if the performance difference is worth throwing out your Steam Deck for this quite yet, but the option to play Game Pass games on the Ally is such a huge win here. I'll be making this my primary handheld PC gaming device for some time so I can get my thoughts together for a full review. But let me know what you think of the ASUS ROG Ally in the comments. Are you picking one up? Do you already have a handheld gaming PC? Do you think the Steam Deck is going to get a run for its money? Make sure you follow me here on YouTube or on Twitch so you don't miss future videos and live streams. And thanks for watching.